All right, so in this video, I'm going to have us change the text colors and add the fish, and that'll be a wrap, huh? So let's take a peek at the final result. Looks like the text should be white. And I'm also noticing uh, on our page, at the bottom we've got this little square here where the uh, repeating background image ends, because it's only a certain height. So I sampled this color in here, and I'd like to show you how I did that. I went to this color picker, html.com, htmlcolors.com. By the way, I did put this link in our Brightspace uh, Week 8 folder at the very bottom where I often put helpful links. Um, and I'm going to copy this color because I found it thinking it would be a good match for this very bottom. So let's take a look at the uh, styles.css. So remember, we're going to make the, let's see, the text white and the background color that. And then we'll create the links. Looks like the bullet has been taken off and the links have been given a color. So those are the things we have to do. So I'll begin by choosing color and FFF is white. And then we want a background color. And I copied that, so I'll paste it. There we go. And then getting out of the body tag, we want to do a link color. So that would be the A tag, the A selector. And I'll do, uh, let's see if I can go to this color picker. And, uh, let's see. That looks good. One, I'll copy that. One E B O C E. So, color. Okay. So UL, it will be list, style, and none. Let's save that and refresh to see what we've got. Oh, that was fast. All right, so this little square is taken care of. These link colors are taken care of. And so is the white. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's add the fish. So if you look at the directions, you'll notice that we have some fish behind the top paragraph. Let me zoom in on this. Not the introductory, but the top paragraph. And we have some fish behind this one. Now something I'm noticing is that it's not just behind a paragraph, but it's also behind the header. I think it's the same with this one. So that means I could create a section for this header plus paragraph, and then another section for this header plus paragraph. I may as well do that to all of them, because who knows what's going to be happening in the glorious future, as Val Green likes to say. So I'm going to go to my index.html and create some containers. I'll make this a div. Let me just get a new line here. Um, div, uh, I'll make it a class, class equals section, because I may want to do something to all of these. Oh, I said I wasn't going to put it on the top. Let me just cut that. This one. And then uh, I'll end that right there. And paste that. So I'm using section many times over because you can do that with classes. You can use them many times over the same name. This might be my last one. 
Yeah. All right. Now I've got that section set up. Um, and now I may want to give, let me just look at that again, just to be sure. This is the paragraph that's called Cockroaches, Mealworms, and Sowbugs. Sow bugs. This is the paragraph called Snails. So I might put an ID on those two paragraphs. Um, this one. Oh, I should have done a div there too. Let me close that. All right, so I'm going to give this an ID of uh, cockroaches. And I'll give the other one where the fish are right here an ID of uh, snails. just so I can have these two paragraphs ID'd. I'll do a save and I'll come over to my CSS. And I'll create my IDs for those. So actually, I'll do the more broad thing first and uh, the section. That's a class, so remember the class is identified by a period, and IDs are identified by a hashtag. So what's going to happen to every section that will not happen to individual se sections? Well, on the individual sections, I'll put the URLs. But on every section, I could say um, top right background position top right actually since I've no, that I think that's good save now let's get the IDs in there we have ID of what was it cockroaches and snails. So this is where I'll put those uh, images, the URLs. Background image. URL. I gotta get out of that this styles CSS folder into my images folder. And this is going to be this is this the cockroaches that was the fish top image. And the snails is going to be the fish bottom image. Folder, go to images and fish bottom. So I just realized we are going to have to give a no repeat. So I'll take this off and I'll say no repeat and then top and right. Let's save it and see what that looks like. Oh gosh, does that work? I don't know why I'm surprised, but I am. Oh, I see the bottom fish image, the one in the snails, but I do not see the one for cockroaches. Let's see what's going on here. Cockroaches. Let me look at my HTML. It's good for me to make mistakes so that <laughs> if you make a mistake, you won't feel so bad and you'll understand it's just what happens, right? Oh, look, I spelled cockroaches wrong here, so I'm going to just... OA, save, go to my styles, save, and now let's try it. There they are, there they are. 
Uh, I will copy it and pop it into the browser. Let's see, where's my HTML? There it is. Control A, Control C. Control A, Control V. Check. Just what I like to see. All right. That was week eight. You've got your midterm next week, so please do this slab a few times. Do it until you can do it in your sleep. I'm going to say that it'll just be two or three times. Do the T-story two or three times, and this one will be good.